oral questions, questions are out. The Honourable Member for Halifax. Mr. Speaker, this morning, before forcing the Ethics and Access Information Committee to go in camera, the Prime Minister's Parliamentary Secretary opposed the NDP motion to delve into the matter of the Benjamin Perrin emails deleted by the Privy Council Office. Who in the Conservative government ordered the Parliamentary Secretary to behave in this fashion? The committee in question uh, was meeting in camera, so I wasn't uh, aware of what was uh, going on. I can say uh, this, uh, Mr. Speaker, the Privy Council Office has taken responsibility for the technical, even inadvertent problem with respect to the emails in question. At the moment the mistake uh, was brought to our attention, we immediately informed the uh, relevant authorities. Good point. The Honourable Member for Halifax. Well, I can tell the Minister that Conservatives went in camera because they were scared of an NDP motion to investigate the deleted emails. But before the Conservatives shut out the public, the member for Oak Ridges Markham said that no investigation was necessary. Well, does the Prime Minister share this view? Does he believe, like his Parliamentary Secretary, that no investigation is needed into how the government handled these missing emails? Mr. Speaker, it's uh, uh, a fact that the Privy Council Office has taken uh, responsibility uh, for this issue. The Honourable Member for Halifax. Well, we started this scandal with a Conservative cover-up, and today the cover-up continues. Conservatives, they evaded questions, they misled the public, and they kept crucial information secret. If Conservatives really don't think that an investigation is necessary into what happened to Ben Perrin's emails, then why don't they just give Canadians a little bit of accountability, maybe an early Christmas gift? Why don't they actually release all the relevant emails to the public today? Hey. The Honourable Minister of Foreign Affairs. I think, I think uh, uh, what, uh, what, what did happen is the Privy Council uh, made the uh, Office of the Prime Minister aware uh, of uh, this mistake and immediately the relevant authorities uh, were advised and we said we'd make all of these emails uh, available to them immediately. Monsieur le Président, ce qu'on veut savoir, c'est la raison pour laquelle les courriers de Benjamin Perrin ont été supprimés. Perrin était le conseiller juridique du Premier ministre. Et tout ce qui touche le bureau du Premier ministre et la tentative de camouflage du scandale est une responsabilité administrative du gouvernement. Est-ce qu'elle concerne la gestion des affaires de l'État? Alors, est-ce que les courriers de Perrin contredisent les affirmations selon lesquelles il n'y avait pas d'entente légale? claim that there was no legal agreement. Minister has been very clear in responding to those questions uh, about uh, uh, the fact that uh, he was not aware uh, of the actions of uh, Mr. Wright in uh, this regard. Uh, we've said that uh, all of these emails which have been uh, uh, recovered will uh, be made available to the authorities so that they can uh, uh, look at uh, all these issues. Monsieur le Président, je voudrais revenir sur ce qui s'est passé au Comité sur l'éthique sexuelle. Est-ce que des ministres du gouvernement peuvent nous dire quelles instructions ont été données au secrétaire parlementaire du Premier ministre par rapport à cette rencontre? Est-ce que mon collègue d'en face a reçu l'ordre de s'opposer à la motion? Si personne ne lui a donné l'ordre, pourquoi s'est-il opposé à la motion? Pourquoi s'est-il opposé à la motion? Le Premier ministre. Uh, I think uh, the, uh, the Privy Council Office has uh, publicly uh, written uh, and taken responsibility for the inadvertent and technical issue with respect uh, to these emails. The minute uh, that, uh, uh, that letter from the Privy Council Office uh, and uh, their uh, apology was received, we informed the irrelevant authorities that they could have all access immediately to all the emails whenever they'd like. The Honourable for Papi Mr. Speaker, Conservative stonewalling on the PMO scandal defined this session of Parliament. Nonsensical answers in question period. Lost, then found, email evidence from the PMO's lawyer. Blocking testimony and investigations in both the House and the Senate. Looking back on this fall, will anyone on the other side stand up and express their regret to Canadians for the approach this government has taken over the past months? The Honourable Minister of Foreign Affairs. 
Well, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, the leader of the Liberal Party certainly knows how to see the glass half full. Um, listen, obviously, uh, two people have taken responsibility. Uh, one person has taken responsibility. Two people uh, are being investigated by the authorities, as they properly should. Uh, we await the outcome of that. Let's come back to the Senate scandal, Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister said here in the House more than once that only Nigel Wright was involved in the secret refund arrangement. But we know that's false. We know that his parliamentary secretary opposed the NDP's motion to shed full light on the deletion of Perrin's emails. Why? Is it because he knows that those emails prove that the Prime Minister misled the House? The Honourable yeah. Parliamentary Secretary. Well, uh, of course, Mr. Speaker, that's just a bunch of rubbish. Uh, the uh, committee has, uh, of course, uh, made no decision. Uh, they are still debating this uh, right now, Mr. Speaker. The committee made the decision to go in camera when the NDP chair seemed to lose control because the NDP members, the NDP members seem to uh, find it more interesting to point of order themselves than to actually <laughs> deal with the motion that was on the table, Mr. Speaker. It was amazing, amazing how. Uh, how much debate got uh, done once the cameras were off, Mr. Speaker, yeah, and uh, yeah, the yeah. committee will make its own decision with respect to that going forward. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, remember. Mr. Speaker, the art of dodging a question is in full display here. The Parliamentary Secretary can certainly try to deflect the Prime Minister's responsibility, but the Prime Minister himself said right here in the House, and not just once, that Benjamin Perriman was not involved in any legal agreement. Now that his office and the police are in the possession of parents' emails, which had mysteriously disappeared and now resurf resurfaced, can any member of the government now tell us what parents' actual involvement was in this scandal? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. I've said uh, on a number of occasions, uh, the Privy Council, as soon as they found out uh, that these emails were available, uh, they made them uh, available to the RCMP, Mr. Speaker. That, of course, is the kind of leadership that you would expect. It's the type of leadership that this Prime Minister has displayed when, of course, he found out in May that uh, this had actually been taking place in his office. He ordered uh, his office to fully assist the RCMP, Mr. Speaker. I contrast that, of course, to the leader of the opposition who for 17 years thought that hiding something was the appropriate course of action, Mr. Speaker. Clear leadership. Lack of it. We're really curious about what's in those emails, Mr. Speaker, because the Conservatives are apparently very threatened, so threatened that they opposed a study into these, the mysterious disappearance and resurfacing of these emails. When is the government finally going to disclose the content of those emails, Mr. Speaker? Uh, of course, uh, Mr. Speaker, the committee is still uh, considering the, uh, the, uh, the motion that was brought forward. But uh, as I said, uh, Mr. Speaker, these uh, emails, uh, uh, as soon as the Privy Council office found uh, that these emails had been put into a, a separate file that had been sequestered, they made those immediately available to the RCMP uh, uh, for them to review, Mr. Speaker. This scandal is, after all, a matter of the administrative responsibility of the government. So could a minister confirm that Benjamin Perrin's emails contain absolutely no information that's compromising to the Prime Minister? Is there any minister willing to answer this question, yes or no? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Of course, Mr. Speaker. Our ministers uh, have been working extraordinarily hard, not only on this, but on all kinds of different files, Mr. Speaker. That's why a million net new jobs have been created in this country. That's why the Minister of National Defense is busy making sure that our forces have the equipment they need. That's why the Minister of Justice brought forward a Victim's Bill of Rights. That's why the Minister of Sport is undertaking the Pan Am Games. That's why the Minister for Public Safety is making sure that our forces have the equipment that they need, Mr. Speaker. That's why the Minister of Natural Resources is making our resources available. The Honourable Member for Hamilton Mountain. Once the Prime Minister claimed Ben Perrin was not involved in a legal agreement, but the RCMP proved that wrong. 
The Prime Minister then claimed no one except Nigel Wright knew about the deal. But RCMP documents proved that wrong too. So, Mr. Speaker, is there any other information about this cover-up that the Conservative government would like to share with Canadians before the RCMP <laughs> releases more details? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Honourable Prime Minister, Secretary, of course, uh, of course, Mr. Speaker, uh, uh, the uh, RCMP indicated that the Prime Minister, of course, uh, as soon as he found out, ordered his office to assist the RCMP so that they had all the information that they needed. Uh, to uh, uncover what had happened, Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister also uh, said that had he known, he would have in no way accepted such an agreement, Mr. Speaker. Again, I contrast that to the Leader of the Opposition, who, uh, when given the opportunity, Mr. Speaker, 17 years ago to admit that he had been given or offered a bribe, uh, decided to tell nobody, Mr. Speaker. He waited until 2011 to tell anybody that he had been offered a bribe, Mr. Speaker. That's not really the type of leadership Canadians expect, and that's why he's in opposition. The Honourable Member for Timmins, James Bay. Mr. Speaker, this politically wounded Prime Minister and his Parliamentary Secretary are having a hard time keeping the lid on. This morning at the Ethics Committee, the Parliamentary Secretary forced out the media from hearing a motion on studying Ben Parham's mysteriously disappearing emails, emails that were hidden from the RCMP for six months. Now, if everything's on the up and up, why cover up such shambolic handling of police evidence? If there's nothing to hide, why not just allow the investigation? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Prime Minister. Uh, well, Mr. Speaker, uh, as I said, the committee is obviously still reviewing this motion, but uh, the, uh, the NDP uh, chair seemed to be losing control when NDP members started point of ordering themselves on committee, Mr. Speaker. That didn't seem to be an effective use of the committee's time, uh, Mr. Speaker. We had three other motions that we had to uh, discuss at the same time, Mr. Speaker. What is clear is this, is that the RCMP have uh, stated that the Prime Minister uh, insisted that his office assist with them, provided all the information that is needed, Mr. Speaker. That's real leadership. Also on page 72, the uh, documents clearly outline that the Prime Minister uh, had no knowledge of what was going on. As the Prime Minister said, had he known, he would have put a stop to it. Mr. Speaker, for eight months, Canadians have been demanding answers about the right Duffy affair. How did the PMO know in advance what would be in the Deloitte audit? Why did no one in the PMO tell the RCMP about the two illegal payoff schemes? Why do the staffers involved still hold on to their government jobs? Will someone on the government side give Canadians an early Christmas present and answer even one of these questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Prime Minister. Uh, of course, Mr. Speaker, we, uh, we, we know what time, what time it is, uh, or, excuse me, what time of year it is. Uh, when we get silly questions like that, Mr. Speaker, uh, uh, the reality is this. The RCMP are investigating this, Mr. Speaker. The RCMP have identified that it's Nigel Wright and Senator Duffy who are the subject of the investigation. The RCMP have identified that the Prime Minister did not know what was, uh, what was being undertaken. The RCMP have also uh, highlighted the fact that the Prime Minister uh, ordered his office to work with and assist the RCMP, right. providing as much help as they could to help the RCMP get to the bottom of this, yeah. Mr. Speaker. The RCMP are investigating. We'll let them do their job. Let's see some other questions the Prime Minister has declined to answer over the past eight months. Was the Prime Minister aware of Irving Gerstein's decision to repay $32,000 to Mike Duffy? Did he know Irving Gerstein had inappropriately contacted one of his Conservative cronies at Deloitte? Did he instruct his ministers to hire his former staffers who were involved in this scheme? Would the government now give Canadians the gift of an answer to at least one of these questions? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Of course, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Senator Gerstein uh, has uh, uh, made it quite clear that he did not and was not going to be paying back Senator Duffy's uh, responses. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister has already identified that, Mr. Speaker. With respect to giving Canadians a gift, uh, uh, it's hard to take that party serious when uh, the person who we most look to this year to give gifts, including my daughters, Mr. Speaker, that gift from Santa Claus, all of a sudden the Liberals are suggesting that Santa Claus is no longer Canadian and that they would abandon the North Pole, Mr. Speaker. They would abandon the North Pole, abandon Santa Claus. Well, on this side of the House, we're going to stand up not only for my daughters, but for your family as well, Mr. Speaker, and for all those young Canadians in the spirit of Christmas waiting for Santa Claus to come and The 
Honourable Member for Waskana. Oh, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister claims his ethics scandal is confined to just two miscreants, Duffy, the greedy senator whom the Prime Minister once called his best appointment, and Wright, the great deceiver whose ethical advice the Prime Minister praised in his book on hockey. But there are more, Van Hammen, Rogers and Woodcock, Byrne, Hilton and Novak, Perrin and Hamilton, Gerstein, Le Breton, Tkachuk and Stuart Olson, all named by police in relation to the cover-up. Which of these people have now been interviewed by the Mounties, not just once, but twice? Which ones? The Honourable Prime Minister, Secretary of the Prime Minister. Uh, of course, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, the RCMP are currently undertaking an investigation, and the RCMP, I'm sure, will ask anybody that they feel uh, uh, they need to ask with respect to this, Mr. Speaker. They've identified that Nigel Wright uh, and Senator Duffy are the subject of, uh, of the investigation, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I trust that the RCMP will continue to do the work that they, uh, they need to, uh, to find uh, uh, whatever information they need. At the same time, Mr. Speaker, I ask the Liberal Party to join with us. Join with us in protecting the citizenship of Santa Claus, Mr. Speaker. Uh, join with us, Mr. Speaker, in making sure the North Pole remains as part of Canada, Mr. Speaker, for all of those kids around the world who are depending on Santa Claus. I ask them to abandon, abandon their ideas and stick with us and keep Santa Claus Canadian.